my life before I got arrested. Arrests were simple. Day-to-day -day living, going to work, taking care of my, my family. I had two jobs, working under the table as a carpenter's helper and a bowling alley mechanic at nighttime. Just being a guy loving the parties and, and chasing the pretty girls. The years started passing and passing and passing. And I got to the point I thought I would never get out of there. Natural instincts of humanity is, is to survive in the elements that you're placed in. That's what happens, and it, it grows, and as each year grows, it grows, and the other luster fades, and your world prevails. And what what did, did I do wrong? What could we have done, you know, to... What, what did I do wrong as a dad, you know? Yeah, you it, didn't. Uh, I know, she always said, this is nothing we could have done mm -hmm. to make things different. He just looked back at my mom like, you know, what are you gonna do? But there was nothing she could do. And it took us about four hours just to get her out the courtroom after they had sent us. It was hard for us to leave out of there. And to look at his face when disbelief and not understanding, that was the hardest. I ran away. I joined the Navy and I wanted to get away as far as I could because I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with the fact of seeing what was going on with my mom and dad and what's happening with my brother. Billy was in my prayers every day. The Christmases, the Easters, the Labor Days, all the holidays. Can you imagine 27 years having not your brother on any holiday at all? It's hard, it's difficult. Even up to the whole time we went to see him, I would go, but I didn't want to go because I knew he wasn't coming back. Where there are cases where there are questions about whether they've gotten the right person, someone has to be able to step in to reveal the truth. The person who is innocent uh, and is in prison, uh, I, I think, is a person that uh, gives all of us, including prosecutors, uh, great concern. I don't think any citizen wants their criminal justice system to convict an innocent person. and to see uh, an innocent person spend years and years in, in prison for something they didn't do. If, if they don't care about that, they should. It's about unlocking the truth. Um, you know, we don't always have assurance that we get it right the first time around, and uh, it's just about following the evidence and finding the truth. And if the truth means that um, our guy is guilty, then that's okay. Then we've served a useful function. We've given the public confidence that the criminal justice system can work. And where it's wrong, we have to right it. Uh, all of us who have represented people for years in the system get letters from prisoners um, and their families. You know, this person is improperly uh, convicted. You need to do something about it. but. It's no one else's job to do it other than the Innocence Project, and they do it, they do it marvelously. The work uh, that the Innocence Project does has been just extremely satisfying because uh, very few places you get to deal uh, with something that's just as clear-cut morally, uh, and I think ultimately legally as this, uh, where lines are drawn that are, that are really comfortable lines for people who care about justice. It's sad that they are needed because you'd hope that, you know, the system would be perfect, but obviously none of us are naive. We know that the system's not perfect. And Innocence Project makes sure that justice in the end gets done, that the right thing happens, and that these men, women, who shouldn't be in prison um, come back home. Even if it's 27 years later, the fact of the matter is, is they reunite, the Innocence Project reunites you know, nieces and nephews, fathers, you know, their sons, sons with their parents. It's, 
It's more than just a legal thing. I think it just comes down to a, a general moral question, you know, whether as a society we're going to accept that there is an acceptable amount of collateral damage. You know, if one or 10 or 20 people are going to be in there um, wrongfully so we can have the rest of the people in there who actually did the crime, that's a moral question. Do we want that? Or is one person wrongfully convicted one too many? And we at the Innocence Project believe that one person in there is just one too many and it's worth our efforts to try to find that person to prove them innocent. It's important in the individual lives of these people. I think it's important for all of us who care about a just society. I'd say thank you very much because uh, without them, it, it won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> when the judge said, Mr. Bain, you are free, that's when it really hit me. Because mainly I had my lawyers beside me, and it really dawned on me as what they had did. They took 35 years, and out of those eight months, they got me to that point. And I have to really thank them for what they have achieved for me. It's, it's probably the, the most joyous feeling you can ever feel. It's something that I think you only reach maybe a few times in your life. <clears throat> it's like a man in the desert that finds water, finally finds water. It's it's an elation that takes you beyond the happiness that you live each day. When I walked out, out of prison, I had my lawyers beside me. That was one of the greatest moments I can ever experience in my life. 